Okay, I'm going to begin okay. by asking you just to say your name. Uh, Ernie Bodai, I'm from Sacramento, California. And you just gave a very inspirational discussion at the American College meeting about the power of what one person could do, but more than that, what you did it on. I wonder if you could explain just briefly uh, what it was you were talking about. Sure. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I wanted to share the message of the breast cancer research stamp and how it came about. And the basic genesis of it was that I was looking for an additional fundraising mechanism uh, for breast cancer research dollars. And I had thought up this idea of getting the Postal Service to issue what's called a semi-postal stamp, which is a regular stamp priced a little bit higher than normal with the extra funds going to breast cancer research. And of course they didn't want to uh, take on the project because they thought they'd open the doors to many other diseases. So I spent a year and a half of my life going to Congress and lobbying um, the Senate and the House to issue a bill that authorized the Postal Service to then uh, put forth a breast cancer stamp. I'm going to stop you for one second because the discussion of how this came about is a long discussion and one that shows amazing determination and really ability to navigate. But I'd like to talk a little bit about what this stamp means in terms of having a stamp out there. What does the stamp do besides get your letter to its destination? Well, the stamp does two things. Number one, it uh, obviously raises money for breast cancer research, and so far we've raised about $85 million. And number two, as importantly, it's a, a very unique tool for awareness because we've sold about one billion stamps, which means that three billion people have seen it because somebody bought it, somebody delivered it, and somebody got it. So the awareness value of the stamp is priceless. So as a result of some of the research dollars that you got, some $85 million in research from a stamp, which somebody doesn't even think about as having anything to do with research, you were talking about some of the kinds of research that are happening interestingly from the Department of Defense dollars. So I wonder if you could just name maybe three top things that you think are really interesting in terms of the research coming as a result of your effort. Yes, I think that there are some of the major uh, issues that have been brought forth are the development of a, of a test called the Oncotype DX, which is a 21 gene analysis of an individual patient's tumor and based on that analysis, we can get a recurrent score which predicts whether a patient will benefit from chemotherapy or not. So as a result, whereas 10 years ago we were pretty much shotgunning 250,000 women a year with chemotherapy, clearly one-third of those ladies nowadays do not need chemotherapy based on that test. And the stamp was uh, one of the major funders of the development of that diagnostic test. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we've done a lot of work with um, um, circulating tumor cells, which are markers for the efficacy of chemotherapy and regimen programs in terms of analyzing them and their counts, whether they're going up or down during treatment, lets us know whether we're doing the correct treatment regimen or not. In addition to that, there's been some fascinating work done involving nanotechnology. nanotechnology basically is miniaturization and we're now able to produce what are called nanostructures, nanotubes, which are so tiny they could literally put 100,000 of them on a strand of hair. And we're able to produce these uh, nanotubes and very interestingly on one arm of a nanotube we'll put a chemotherapeutic drug, on another arm we'll put a uh, nutrient like folic acid. We then label that with a monoclonal antibody injected into the patient. If the uh, nanotubes find the tumor and the cancer cell sees the folic acid as a nutrient and brings the, uh, or the nanotube inside the cell. Then the cell realizes, oh my goodness, there's a chemotherapy agent attached to this and therefore we're killing the cells from within. So you made this comparison to the Trojan horse as a, a nano Trojan horse. It is uh, the nano, it is a, 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 the Trojan horse in the sense that if you go back in the mythological times, uh, the city of Troy was besieged by the Greeks for 10 years. They could never get through the walls, so the Greeks uh, built a, a large horse 
and then sailed away. Inside that horse were about 60 or so soldiers. Trojans went to sleep at night. The soldiers came out, opened the gates, and the Greeks came in and took over the city of Troy. So all of this done with one person's effort to create the need and awareness of a postage stamp, the breast cancer stamp, which led to all of this research and other benefits. So I want to thank you on behalf of all the women out there and uh, all the doctors who have the opportunity to benefit from using that research and uh, for taking the time to speak with you today. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Take care.